Confined space gas monitors. This time we're talking about peak reading. So many people, um, when I do some teaching in confined spaces, when I ask them to do peak readings on their gas monitors, they are unsure. This is the smallest item you may be taking into a confined space. It's your gas monitor, but it's the most important piece of equipment. It's going to keep us alive. You need to be making sure that when we go into a confined space, that the actual atmosphere is safe to enter. What I'm going to try to do is give you some um, simple guidelines of what to expect when you're doing just a simple gas monitoring. We have a very simple gas uh, an entry with a bit of a dog leg which can go on to infinity. We can say it's maybe four meters deep and we have a person at the top, your entry controller, who wants to make sure that that particular entry point is safe to enter. The gas monitor is switched on, full function test. You will see on the gas monitor, it will have 0, 20.8, 0 and 0. On this gas monitor, left hand side, we have combination explosives, so that's our LEL, that's our oxygen. Bottom left we have carbon monoxide and this one is hydrogen sulfide. That is what is in this room, that is what this simulated top person is viewing now. They are now going to simulate going into a peak reading. So on a long rope we can sample before we go in. Another good idea as well, if you've got chambers, we can have a lid on the top of the chamber, check around the surface of the lid, so if there's anything escaping, we can check as well. Because what you don't want to be doing is lifting the lid and getting a full whack of whatever gases could be inside there. So you may have considered that before doing this particular entry with the gas monitor. As you're lowering it in, we can manoeuvre the gas monitor around, all the way around, to sample as much as we can of whatever we're going into. And then eventually we'll leave it just proud of the floor because you might get sediment at the bottom there and we don't want to be dipping into the uh, sediment and maybe contaminating the gas monitor. Up to you, your risk assessment, how long you want to leave that in there for, for as long as you wish, um, depending on, like I say, your risks. Some people might say considerations, a duty of an entry controller could be, let's go and brief the team and go and inspect the equipment. And then after that, we'll inspect the, um, the confined space and peak reading. But while that's happened, unbeknown to me, the entry controller, the gas monitor has just taken a reading and it's dropped to 20.6. We don't know that because the gas monitor is lowering down. It's reached here, midway, and it's gone to... 19.9%, but we don't know that because we cannot see it. Even down here, because we've got a bit of an airflow, it's dropped. No, it hasn't actually. We've got a bit of a wind flow. So it's actually risen a bit. So we've gone up to a, maybe a 20.2% level. Okay, once we've actually done our check of the gas monitor, we've got our values, but we're not quite sure of the values yet because we cannot see it. So. The big concept is when the, the gas monitor comes up, what's your gas reading? People tend to look at it and goes, it's 20.8 and three zeros, as I see here. But it's only what the vicinity is where it's actually sat in. Let's have a look, see if we can find a 19.9, because I'm going to simulate what's actually happened. I'm going to gently breathe over the sensors, which will change the atmosphere. And as I can see, values are dropping. We've actually got a low level oxygen, got it down to 19.7. And that's me watching that, but we don't know that yet. So what do we do? For a peak reading, we've got to go into the system. And on this particular model, what I like doing guys is teaching the basics. If you get the basics right, then fine. We infiltrate the gas monitor.
There are things out there called like peak holds and things like this, but that is up to you when you go into your certain gas monitors and learn about how to use a gas monitor through its entirety. This is just the basic stuff. So I'm going to find out what I've actually got. So on this particular model, I'm just going to press the left button and left again. And I've got a high reading. I've got a high reading of 20.8, which is fine. That's good for oxygen. But I've got one hydrogen sulfide parts per million. So it's recognized there's a bit of hydrogen sulfide. I'll reset that. I then click the button again. Now I want some low readings. On this occasion, I've actually found it's 19.7. So that's my lowest reading. But it's 19.7% safe to enter. So down here, it wasn't actually 19.9. We've actually found it is 19.7. Is that safe to enter? Think about it. On previous videos, I've discussed a bit about oxygen. And I gave readings of 20.8. And after five minutes, 20.6, down to 20.4, and maybe 19.9. As you can see, it's dropped down to 19.7. There is a trend. Get out and reassess. But this time, you've just seen 19.7 as a number. But look back. It should be 20.8. It's not. Why? So what can we do? Do not enter. Apply some control measures. For example, ventilation. Now we have a reading. Our peak reading will be 0 LEL, 0 CO, 1 part hydrogen sulfide, and 19.7 oxygen. We cannot go in. Do our control measures and do this again until we reach a satisfactory level of oxygen to enter. That's your PE reading. 